Great. Um, well, thank you so much, Sue, um, uh, for that um, introduction. And I, I'm, as I said, I'm delighted to be here. I, I feel very privileged, actually, to be a part of an amazing profession, the profession of midwifery. And I, I'm proud to call myself midwife. And every time I am with a group of midwives or visiting a country, I feel even more proud that wherever you go in the globe, you can always find a midwife. And what connects us is our, dare I say, our midwifery DNA. Um, but I'm going to share with you all those that are listening um, across the globe and those that are listening um, from uh, work, um, traveling uh, in their, their, wherever you are, I'm going to share a little about the ICM. Sue mentioned that I uh, served as the uh, Chief Midwifery Officer for the NHS in England, and I served for four years. And so I'm now here um, at the International Confederation of Midwives. So hopefully I, you can see my screen. I'm just going to go on to a slideshow and take this from the beginning. Right from the beginning. <laughs> OK, so I think I've shared previously, it's, it's one of my strap lines that I frequently use, that what we do as midwives will ripple through generations. So wherever you are, uh, feel proud that your contribution matters and what you do will impact on people when they're older, when they're later in life, and indeed their children and their children's children. So the impact will ripple through generations. But for now, I'm frequently asked, who is the ICM? Particularly for midwives in the UK, uh, who are they? Where are they? Where are you going? Are you going to ICM? And they refer to ICM as Congress. ICM is not Congress. <laughs> we host a Congress every three years. So uh, what is the ICM? Just a little bit about that. Uh, before I go on to um, other things. Just to let you know that the ICM has been around for now 102 years, celebrating its 102nd birthday this year. It supports and represents and works to strengthen professional associations. And some people might not be familiar with that. In the UK, you have the Royal College of Midwives, the RCM. That's in a professional association. Other In other parts of the world, uh, they're referred to as colleges or societies. We refer to them, um, and this is how we describe these organisations, as professional midwife associations. And so there are 140 member associations because there are members. They're the ICM, the International Confederation of Midwives members. So we work through our 140 member associations, be that uh, called a college or a, a, a royal college or a, an, an association or a society. And what's really exciting for me is the member associations, this represents 119 countries across every continent. So we have uh, a reach and impact in every continent across the world. And together, we represent over one million midwives globally. And, and that is, um, I think, a huge responsibility that we take really seriously because every midwife matters. Every midwife right now that is in a country, um, in a rural part of the country where there is nobody, nobody but a midwife to support women who may well be um, have a uh, low risk um, and other women that might have complex care needs and who have they got they have a midwife a midwife that is trained and educated hopefully so you know as I say what we do ripples through generations and it's really important for the ICM that we have midwives all the midwives across the world who are educated and regulated and working in established health systems so that they can affect the best care, support the best outcomes for mums and babies. But, you know, this is about our global 
uh, representation. And I have a vision. Of course I do. We all have a vision. But this is tied into somewhat the vision of the ICM, the International Confederation of Midwives, but also my own personal vision. So the vision from the ICM is every childbearing woman has access to a midwife's care for herself and her newborn. That's not a difficult ask, but actually it is. It is. We have over a million midwives, but we need so many, so many more, so many more that are equipped to be able to do their jobs well. And I really must emphasize that. Um, but I see a future. I see a future where all women and babies have the same maternity outcomes and experiences as those who have the best, regardless of ethnicity or socioeconomic status. You've heard me say this before, and I will never tire of saying this. All women and babies have the same maternity outcomes and experiences as those who have the best. And to achieve that, we need to pull together. We need to be bold and courageous and say the things that people don't want to hear. And I'm going to say some of those things as we canter through this presentation. I see a future where women and babies are prioritised and protected to receive safe midwifery and maternity care at times of humanitarian and climate crisis. This is an emerging situation and it isn't getting any better. And I might be able to share a little bit more about that as, as, as we progress. But we need to ensure that mums and babies are prioritised because at times of humanitarian crises, climate crises, they're the ones that I believe do not receive the care and attention that they need, need for survival. We need the generations to continue. I see a future where every day in 2020, approximately 800 women died from preventable causes. 800 women, 800 women every day, meaning that a woman dies every two minutes. And I see a future where this is a thing of the past. You, you, you couldn't fathom that data, could you? 800 women a day? These are global estimations, of course. I see a future where we have a reachable target for the sustainable development goals so that the, the ambition is to reduce maternal mortality to less than 70 maternal death. And we know that in some parts of sub-Saharan Africa, the maternal mortality rate is 1,100 uh, um, 1, per 100,000 live births versus um, some high-income countries where the maternal mortality rate is 11, 12. I still, however, say that one death, one death, one preventable death is one too many. But we need to have a future. I see a future where this sustainable development goal is reached and surpassed. We can surpass this, but we need collective action. I see a future where almost 2 million babies born every year uh, are still born every year or one every 16 seconds is a thing of the past. We want this to be a thing of the past, a future where one's chances of being stillborn or dying giving birth is not determined by the fact that the birth has taken place in a low or middle income country. Totally unacceptable, but that is a reality today. A future where our ambition to end preventable maternal mortality by 2030 will be met. A future where stillbirth rates for high and low income countries are not higher in rural areas. And I'm now thinking about the UK, and um, socioeconomically disadvantaged and those from ethnic minority backgrounds are in these rural areas and are um, greatly affected because there's a, there's a disparity in health outcomes and a future where midwives, midwives have an automatic seat at the table, at government table, at the ministry's table for planning, development and um, guidance about sexual, reproductive, maternal and newborn health plans. So. Of course, I know you see a future where all these things will happen too, but we need concerted effort to make these things a reality. And the reason why is because we have evidence that shows us that uh, midwives are educated and regulated to ICMs, so um, the International Confederation 
midwife standards and integrate it into a well, um, well-established health system, providing family planning care, can, and look at the can, 87% of essential care can be provided. We can avert more than 50% of maternal deaths, stillbirths, neonatal deaths, improve over 50 other related outcomes. You can see them there on the screen, that there are so many um, outcomes and association with having midwives educated and regulated to ICM standards. We have global standards. That's pretty unique for an organization, but we have them. And we know that we have the formula for improving health outcomes. If only we had every country signed up in a way that this was established and sustained. There's no point in putting it in and then taking it out four years later, two years later, one year later. And this is about preventing stillbirths. So maternal death, etc. So we have the formula, midwives educated and regulated to ICM standards and integrated into a well functioning, a well functioning health system. And we believe, we believe that if every country implemented the ICM professional framework, then they would, every country who implemented this in a sustainable way would have high quality um, midwifery care, midwives providing high quality care. So let me just talk you through um, this uh, uh, framework. This is the professions framework, the midwifery professions framework. Um, we have a philosophy, of course we do, because um, in the absence of a philosophy, we lose our direction. But at the core of the philosophy, we have essential competencies. And the essential competencies are used by midwifery regulators um, as a measure of competence when um, midwives are registered and entering into practice. So the essential competencies are really significant, underpin everything that we do for practice. And then, of course, we have a re evidence based practice research. We have research that informs the way we work. And we have so much research that suggests that if you have a midwife, you can improve a midwife that's educated and regulated to ICM standards. You can have high quality care by a midwife, which has an association with improving outcomes. We know the narrative about continuity of midwife care. And we know that you can only implement a model like that if you have midwives that are educated, regulated, have a cadre of midwives that is associated with safe care, and you have midwives that are um, uh, supported to work in a continuity way, in a sustainable way. Education, we have education standards at the ICM, so midwives must be trained um, using those education standards. Of course, regulation, regulation protects the public and also safeguards the profession, safeguards the midwife. The associations, I've talked about the midwives associations and how we work through mid midwife associations to help the ICM to achieve that ambition of having a midwife for every woman, a midwife that's educated, regulated and working within an established health system. I'll never tire of saying those things. It's not just good enough to have a midwife. We must have a midwife that is educated, regulated, and working within an established health system and educated to ICM competencies. And then, of course, leadership. Where would we be without leadership if we haven't got a leader that will guide, support, and help us to achieve these things? then we won't make very much progress. A leader that's advocating with the profession, a leader that's having conversations with health system leaders, with policy makers, with ministries, with governments, being bold and courageous to advocate for the profession, showing our, uh, our um, uh, decision makers, our system leaders, that look at this evidence, look at the correlation between high quality care and a midwife that's educated and regulated to ICM standards working within an established health system. Look at the correlation. Look what happens. You will have high quality care from midwives, which can only impact on saving lives and improving outcomes. 
And of course, we don't stop there. We must, of course, have an enabling environment, an enabling environment where midwives are supported to work to their potential, supported to do the things that they've been trained to do, um, being valued, being respected, being invested in, um, having enough support around them to do their jobs well, having kit that's ready to be used, having kit that's safe to be used, having um, enough resource to be able to do their jobs well. And also having an MDT team, a multidisciplinary team, multi-agency team that they can refer women to. This is about working collaboratively with obstetricians, neonatologists and other support staff. Really, really important. So um, an enabling environment. And then lastly, we don't stop there because lastly, we must ensure that we have gender equality and um, equality and diversity that underpins so that we have equality in everything that we do. So significant and important. And the data shows us why we need to have gender equality, why we need to have equality and diversity. And around the side of this um, uh, um, uh, framework are just some of the things that we're doing at the ICM to make this framework come alive. And what I will say and I'm taking a little bit of time on this, but I think it's really important. If one element of this framework is not delivered, it will weaken the other elements of the framework. So if you're expecting high quality care by implementing one element, it won't work. They are in inextricably linked. When one area is weakened, the other area is weakened. If you've got weak leadership, you won't get the evidence-based research um, into uh, practice, into the hearts and minds of system leaders, policy leaders to affect change. If you don't have associations that are supporting and driving this action, then um, we won't get very far with our narrative. If we haven't got regulation, then we won't be able to safeguard the profession and the public and so on. So these are inextricably linked. And this is the model. This is the profession's model that we are speaking to um, all our countries through our associations and um, indeed to our system leaders and governments too. And the reason why I'm so passionate about that um, uh, uh, framework, our framework, our profession's framework, is because we know that there's an association between achieving universal coverage of midwife delivered interventions and saving lives. If we look at by 2035, 4.3 million lives per year could be saved. If we're less ambitious and we take this down to 25% increase in coverage of midwife delivered interventions every five years, circa 2.2 million lives and even a modest increase would um, affect a 1.3 million lives per year by 2035. And so absolutely, there is evidence to show an association, an association between high quality care from a midwife and improving outcomes for mums and babies. This is about the next generation. It's a no brainer. We need people to hear this because this is about saving lives. But I predicate all of this by saying, a midwife that is educated and trained to ICM standards working within an established health system. So um, I'm going to stop there and I just want to thank you all for all you do, for all you care for, and thank you for all you do for each other and the profession. I believe that together we can, but we need to be bold and courageous. And in some parts of the globe, people aren't doing so well because they haven't got the infrastructure. In some parts of the globe, uh, midwives aren't being listened to or sidelined and the evidence is ignored. Collective action is what we need. Bold, courageous leaders and, of course, your good selves to affect change. Why? Because we believe in improving outcomes and saving lives.